There you go. Oh, there you are. It, it canceled me out the first time, but yeah, it works. Gotcha. Yeah, I saw you. <laughs> okay, we're good then. Sorry. Right, so who, Technical difficulties tonight. Yeah, it's all good. It's good that we get this figured out and get all the kinks figured out first. Yeah. Okay, so it is recording now. Okay, cool. Um, I think we're supposed to say a prayer first. Is anyone interested in opening? I can do that. Perfect. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Our Father in heaven, we come before thee in prayer at this time, this, this evening, to thank you that we could gather here together and be able to discuss one with another. We pray that the Spirit can abide with us and that we can learn from it. And we pray that we can enjoy each other's company and good conversation. We pray, saying all these things, in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, let's go ahead and start so we can recap the case first. So, um, what was the main issue? What did you guys think? Yeah. Hold on. I mean, I wrote down. I took notes of what I wrote. Yeah, let me see if I can find. So I said, I guess I can read what I said, right? Because I, I already have it yeah. written down. I said, I believe that each individual is thinking very differently than the other. And it is imp and it is sometime, something that happens to anyone. So while York is thinking that he has made great choices for the company, Shelburne felt as if York did not appreciate his work. Mm -hmm. um, I think what has caused a problem and what set things over the edge was that York got very upset at the production team because he felt that they did not deliver what they promised. I yeah, I think that's all true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. For me, it just kind of seemed like there was a disconnect mm -hmm. of like communication between those different levels. And because of that, people were getting upset and I feel like if there was a closer relationship between those levels, then there wouldn't be as much miscommunication. Then they wouldn't have people getting angry at workers or stuff like that because they would know what's expected perfectly if they were closer. Yeah, that's true. I, I found it interesting when she's like, when Mary is um, reflecting like on the third par fourth paragraph on the first page, Mary's reflecting about like what a great employee York is. And when he was the assistant brand manager, um, you know, he was working well together with the former brand manager and, it, you know, getting, respecting them and playfully challenging people with new techniques. So it seemed like kind of a switch in his leadership style. Mm -hmm. um, as I was reading through things that like, that to me kind of reflected what the culture was within the company mm. versus this like public shame and yelling thing that uh, York, we see York doing all the other times. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Um, so why was it important why was this issue important do we well think? It, i think it's i think it's really important that they get this fixed because it's creating a disconnect and you know there was that incident with there being issues in the slides and stuff so it's embarrassing the company and it's just it's making a mess out of things that should just be flowing smoothly yeah but also the way i guess he approached the employee like i feel like it was a little rude like, um i don't know to me it sounded rude yeah when I they agree. were meeting and like oh like this shouldn't have happened and then kind of like throwing the ball like i mean it's not my fault but you know someone else in the team messed up and they need to take the responsibility which it's fine i think but i guess the way he approached it in front of everyone it's a little embarrassing for that employee as well yeah um, that part, like, um, I don't have the reading up, but the part where he's like, um, 
he's also talking to that employee saying how this can affect his um I guess moving on in the company. Yeah, that yeah. A little harsh, like it's like threat. He was publicly threatening, basically. Exactly. Yeah, I, I think it said it was a career limiting move or something. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, I think that's that what was it. it. I don't think that's appropriate to do. In a no. Yeah, it seems a little extreme in my mind. <laughs> yeah. I think I've run into this like in my career where people are recently promoted. Mm -hmm. And um, they feel the need to like establish their dominance and, you know, prove that they're now a manager. Mm -hmm. um, and so that is kind of like what hit me through a lot of this was yeah. um, not a lot of leadership experience. Um, he felt he needed to prove himself. Um, and instead of coaching, he's just like publicly humiliating. Yeah. Yeah, completely. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think also it was very telling. I can't get my mouse to work. Um, how his employees reacted afterwards. Uh -huh. You know, like they're visibly embarrassed. They're hanging their heads down. They just want to get out of there. Yeah. Um. That's something I mentioned in my writing. Um, it's like yeah. how like physical behavior can say a lot about yeah. how you feel. And so I think that probably his employees are in a set of mind where they're stressed, yet they don't probably don't want to express it to him face to face probably, but yeah. it is not making them feel well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, totally. I And the thing is, with that kind of attitude, it's going to drive that wedge further. And there's going to be more miscommunication and possibly more problems because of, you know, that feeling between the two parties. Yeah. I mean, I've worked in a situation, not maybe not as bad as this, but one of these where, um, like, public shaming is the thing to do. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's not fun. It's super stressful. You never know it's, like what's going to come down at you. Uh -huh. um, and it's really hard to read your boss when he's in that mood because you'll think like sometimes it will be okay and you're able to say something, but then he flies off the handle at another thing. Like uh -huh. you can't trust his reaction and you never know what to expect. Uh -huh. It's just not fun. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Um, I think we, the next question is what specific behaviors that raise the concern. We talked about those, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think we covered that pretty good. Yeah. Okay. So next let's go ahead. They, we're going to talk about the culture at Derby Foods. So, um, because I think ultimately his behavior, Simon's behavior, um, is inconsistent with the company culture and it's kind of undermining it. Um, to some extent. Otherwise, I don't think people would be so like up in arms about his behavior. Um, so what do we think, what do we believe the culture is at Derby Foods from this two pages that we get? Well, it almost seems like the culture's changed now because mm -hmm. now everyone's, you know, walking on eggshells. Everyone's like, seemingly super nervous around each other and they don't want to make a bigger issue than you know the the multiple issues they're already having yeah. so it, it seems like a very stressful situation mm -hmm. and it seems like that is you know integrating into the culture of the, the work area mm -hmm. yeah i agree um they're obviously not like used to this kind of behavior i think if they were like John Shelbourne wouldn't have like freaked out at Mary. Like seriously, what's going on with this guy? Yeah. Um, it seems to be more collaborative. Um, I mean, if you look at how York is working with the brand manager before, um, that's more collaborative than like a hierarchical "I'm your boss, do what I say" kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Brand managers are all working together. 
it, it probably is, um, I don't know, I was thinking about this, but I think maybe the company needs a little change in culture or like what they have as a statement. Yeah. Um, because from what it sounds like, uh, Simon has been able to do some changes even before he was in this position with the previous person that was in his position to make changes and, and all this. And it sounds like they were able to lift up the brand and revive some of the things um, that were affecting it. But mm -hmm. I mean, to me, that also sounds like probably things haven't changed for many years. And I mean, as the years go by and they encounter different um, trials, I guess, as a company. I feel like sometimes companies need to reevaluate how they manage their stuff and, you know, how they do things. Yeah. That's an interesting point. I, I took it a little differently that um, Simon is actually, like, the outsider in the culture. But that could just be where... I could see that. Yeah, I, I took yeah, it as, yeah, he's, a, he's different than everyone else. Mm -hmm. um, and he's kind of like the sore thumb within the company versus. Um, so I, in my mean? writing, I mentioned how, um, let me read you this part. Yeah. You know how we read about the different styles? Mm -hmm. um, so I thought he was more like the pay seating style. Okay. Yeah. Setting style. Yeah. So it says uh, a leader who sets high performance standards and exemplifies himself has a very positive impact on employees who are self motivated and highly competent. But other employees tend to feel very, um, overwhelmed by such a leader's demand for excellence and to resent his tendency to take over a situation. So I don't I felt like because uh, the how he approached the team as well. Uh -huh. The production team, I feel like he was more like, okay, like I'm in control and I want this to look this way and I want mm -hmm. it, you know, so-and-so way. And I guess he has in his mind a certain way that he wanted that product to look like, but probably he didn't express it well enough to me for them to achieve what he was thinking because I just feel like he wants to take over everything and like he wants to have control yeah. of everything. Yeah, he's kind of got his his thumb in like everything, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. That could also yeah, I think, be. I think that personality fits him perfectly. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Um. So just still talking about culture, really quick. They go through this, and we'll talk about who's building areas of culture. Mm -hmm. Um. In general, what are corporate politics and how do they affect the culture of a company? Corporate politics. Yeah, thoughts? I'm not entirely sure what they mean by corporate politics. Mm -hmm. um, but I can, if, if I'm understanding it right, is that like the relationship between different levels of superiority? within it the can, company it can be um i think that hierarchical way but then there's also like so where i would work last time uh there was a lot of um you have to know people to get things done um you have to like you know play whatever the game is like my last supervisor was horrible like he did this public shaming stuff like all the time um and there really was suddenly this like divide in our team of 10 where those of us that like liked the guy, those of us that couldn't stand the guy, but the way he built the culture, we weren't sure who we could trust. Mm -hmm. So it became this like politics game of like, I'm not sure who I should talk to. Um, who should I talk to? Who can I talk to? Who's safe? Um, do I dare talk to anyone else because that could get back to him and then I'm screwed, you know, like, yeah. All of these kind of like underlying things that happen in a company that affect the culture, that affect the employees, um, the games that you have to play, like all of those kind of things. In my current company, the politics are not quite as bad, but we have to address everything really slowly because the company is not used to change. 
And so if we change too much too soon, like everyone gets in an uproar. Mm. So, I see. yeah. I mean, if you just think of like career politics, right? Senators and those kind of guys, like all that lobbying that happens behind the scenes and, you know, whoever's padding backs to get stuff done, like that happens in certain companies as well. That is true. Well, if they let because, the um, do. I worked for a bank before and. Yeah. I guess banking is because I was at a credit union, the mm -hmm. bank. The credit union is changing a lot in the sense of technology. Um, I guess I don't know if it's because we're in the DC area. It's like everything has to be electronic. So a lot of customers were not happy with the changes because there's no tellers anymore as machines. Yeah. And it's like everyone's freaking out. But then the upper man management is like, you've got to do this this way. And like, we have to answer this way. And <sighs> there was a lot of miscommunication between both sides. Yeah. And then the bank, I believe that the manager had a lot to do with like how the vibe was in the branch. Yeah. How everything was being approached because then I would talk to other managers and other branches and I feel like they would approach things differently than how my manager would do it. Mm -hmm. Um, and we had that issue where like, okay, like who do I trust that? Like if I want to talk about certain things or like if I need help, yeah. with this, it was kind of hard to approach it because then you didn't know what to expect from mm -hmm. either side. Yeah. So, I think all of that kind of stuff plays into the culture. Yeah. Like, who can you trust? You're not quite sure what to do. Um, I think politics in general kind of undermine culture mm -hmm. um, because it does create that distrust. Have you ever run into situations like this, Logan? Um, not all. Oh, I mean, like a little bit, but not too extensively. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think, I think just in general, it's hard to create that culture of trust because there's so many different personalities working together. I think it takes a lot of like comprehensive effort to unite those forces together. I mean, like I've had experiences where, you know, I've really enjoyed my job and we were all super close and communication was very clear on what we wanted to get done and everything went smoothly. And I've had experiences where, you know, there's not a lot of communication and things are a lot harder and those relationships are more stressed. Yeah. It's funny that you bring that up because at my bank job, there was a lot of training involved. Um, and one thing that they try to base on a lot was like getting to know each individual's. Um, you mentioned the word I forgot. Like this, uh, like how each one of us has different ways of being. Oh my goodness! What? Am, why? Why did I forget the word? I know what you're trying to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like okay, like there's different types of people and how you need to learn to adapt to it and then mm -hmm. approach yeah. them that way. So that way they don't feel like threatened or like, you know, you're saying it in a bad way or things like that. You kind um, of adapt your communication style based off how other people take it. Is that kind of it? Yes. Cool. But at the same time, it was difficult, mm -hmm. especially when you're in a frustrating situation where it's like, oh my gosh, like I need to make a decision now, or like we have to do something about this now in the moment. It's like, okay, everyone freaks out. And then I guess yeah. we forget about that. I don't know. Yeah. It, that takes some, some effort, I think, to be able to step back and communicate ways that, um, makes sense to others especially like you said in stressful situations because i think for me i default to like what how i communicate not like thinking about what other people need when i'm like freak like i'm stressed like that so it definitely takes some time for me to step back and be able to frame thoughts and make sure i'm communicating in a way that works like i have a couple people at work right now that i i really have to think through how i'm gonna say things and how i phrase things or else it becomes like accusatory in their mind or I'm undermining their like intelligence level or, you know, crazy stuff. Um, so that's a good yeah, point. It's not easy. <laughs> no, it's not. But I think that kind of stuff like contributes to culture. Um, yeah, and it makes a difference. And to your point about trust slogan, I think, uh, I think that's huge. Um, 
like if trust is available in the culture, I think things move so much faster um, because you're not trying to like think through like, well, what should I do? I don't know how this person's going to react. You can just do it. And everyone assumes positive intent and you just kind of go forward. I love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's like where I work now, which is just amazing. Um, but stuff gets done a lot faster. Okay. So are we good? I'm sorry. I feel like I'm done. You guys good? Okay. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay. So let's talk about um, roles in building culture. So what is Mary's role in establishing culture as like the supervisor? What are your thoughts? I think it all just kind of trickles down. Um, if you have a, a better relationship with the person directly under you, mm-hmm. then that trickles down possibly to the next and, and it just keeps going. So you start higher up and, you know, even in her position, she can advise, uh, I forget the, the fellow's name to go and, you know, try to resolve those issues there and develop a close relationship as she tries to do that with him and, yeah. and so forth. I think that's great. Um, I agree. I, I really do think like the supervisor kind of like leads the way and sets an example with all of this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, can we think of anything specific that she's doing to support the culture in the company? I mean, I believe that she she is listening and she is paying attention mm-hmm. to things that are happening around. Um, and I believe that's something important that a manager should have, um, especially when you have a lot of people that you're in charge of. Um, yeah. Yeah, that awareness of the situation is important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think her, um, her desire to uh, give feedback, um, mm-hmm. you know, she really does. She's like, she says that she needed to give him point, pointed feedback and it was time to have a conversation. Mm-hmm. So um, rather than just ignoring it. Yeah. Um, can we think of what she's doing to work against the culture? I don't know if there's like really outstanding things she's doing to go against it. I, I feel like she's more in favor of fixing it than mm-hmm. she's contributing to it. Yeah. I think so. Okay. Um, okay. Maybe I guess York in this case will have to be the one to I guess rethink about the way he's approaching things now that he is in a higher position. Yeah. Because I don't know, maybe he forgot. <laughs> but, you know I don't mm-hmm. know, thinking back to being I don't know, like just sincere and like approach his employees in a in a manner that makes them feel acknowledged. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean they did good things, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and really, so uh, in my training at work now. Sorry, I talk about my job a lot. I don't have anything else to talk about. Um, they talk about this thing called ultimate responsibility, and it talks about like how. Um, if I have a problem, I'm, I'm probably part of the problem and it's my responsibility to fix the problem. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot less of like pointing fingers and doing all these other things and blaming other people because legitimately if something happened, you probably had some sort of like help in it going wrong and really being able to sit back and reflect and say, okay, what did I contribute to this situation and what could I have done differently? Um, and so like this situation with the PowerPoint being wrong, um, honestly, there was probably other people that reviewed that PowerPoint or contributed to that PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, there's other people other than Tim that probably took a hit for it. That's what I was thinking. I mean, it can't just be the one person reviewing everything. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Um, so what is Simon is doing some good things. What is he doing to support the culture? Can we think of anything? He has been able to revive the brand. Like they said, Mm -hmm. 
he has a lot of great ideas about how yeah. to I guess their new customers and how things have changed. Um, so I guess he brings a new, like, fresh mind to, like, how to evolve the products and, like, the labeling and all the stuff that would attract the new customers. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that, that, like, his presence for the company is important with helping them move forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it talked about how, like, the rest of the brand managers are super excited mm -hmm. about the per what he had presented and the energy that he brought. Yeah. So that's obviously good that he's, like you said, reviving the brand and getting everyone involved. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is he doing to work against the culture? I think he's, he's stressed, and that could be the cause of why he is reacting this way. Mm -hmm. um, because he probably feels like he has more on his shoulders and he needs to step up and like do a great job so that everyone can see, you know, his hard work and how he's trying to help the company. But at the same time, I feel like probably all of that stress is accumulated on him and he feels a lot of pressure. Um, and I mean, and I've seen this before with like my previous managers, what I've seen like an executive come over and they're like freaking out, like, oh my goodness, what do we do? Like, don't do this, don't do that. And they're nervous and then they're passing that mm -hmm. on to us. And then the, it just gets tense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree that, you know, I think he feels like there's more weight on his shoulders and he feels that it's more of his responsibility. And, you know, he can let some of that stress relax when he's working as a team with, you know, the people with him. But instead, I think he's feeling it all on himself. And instead of letting him work together and letting that stress just be, you know, distributed evenly and everyone's working together, he's just letting it rest on his shoulders alone which yeah. causes him to act in a certain way mm -hmm. yeah i agree i think he's in we talked about earlier his inconsistent responses you know there's some times where he's totally cool and there's other times where he's public and shaming and there's other times then he just like explodes and blows up so um you know it's hard to we've we said this it's hard to know what to expect when you have a boss that's doing that Mm -hmm. Um, and that kind of, I, for me, that puts me on edge and definitely undermines mm -hmm. how I, I feel. also the fact that he should maybe try to give some of those responsibilities to some of his employees so that way he yeah. doesn't feel that way, um, because it just makes everyone feel uncomfortable in the team. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think delegating is a good form of management and leadership, right? Yeah, it's an opportunity for us to learn as employees exactly. and then also um, gives the coaching opportunity to help people prepare for whatever the next step is. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a good point. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll talk about what feedback they should give. So how should Mary approach the discussion? What do we think? And what are some key items that she should cover? What should she do? I think it's important for her to stress um, the importance of having a good relationship with those that you work with. Um, we were talking a little bit earlier about like leadership types. Mm -hmm. And I think one that would help is I think it's affiliative where it's like having a closer, almost like almost a friendship with uh, the people you work with. And I think if she emphasized um, having a stronger bond as units in a company, then I think these problems would kind of almost resolve themselves over time. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. I think she should also um, thank him for his work and what he has done. Mm -hmm. Because I believe that acknowledging all of the hard work he's done so far can, you know, help him feel like, okay, like I'm not alone. And they see that I am trying and that I am doing this. Um, but I think acknowledging him and maybe bringing up something like maybe a story of hers that she had in the past, maybe something similar that happened to her when she started being a manager. How did she approach it and how did that help her? Mm -hmm. Because you know, I feel like that if she can relate to him, then he will feel that connection with her as well. 
and having that relationship with her, I think will help him feel less stressed. Yeah. And I think for me, it makes it easier to go to my boss with problems if I have that relationship. So as they continue to work on that, then instead of maybe exploding like he's been doing, uh, he'll just go to her and be like, okay, I need help to figure out how to handle this situation. Yeah. Um, I also think that she should take some time to um, kind of work through what her thoughts are. You know, she has all these thoughts about what he does before and these both of these situations. I think um, the coaching um, and feedback PowerPoint that we talked, we looked through um, also talked about um, preparing, asking questions of yourself, thinking through what responses would be. Um, he may be pretty surprised by this conversation. I mean, when her assistant called and made the appointment, they just said, hey, she just wants to touch base with you. There was no, like, sign of... Explanation of anything. Yeah, this might not be a good conversation. Yeah. So I think doing that is kind of something that stuck out to me. Yeah. Um, but she should definitely have a coaching session with him. Yeah, definitely. And maybe even, I, this doesn't talk anything about what their coaching um, cycle is or what how often they're touching base. But I know for me, um, in my last job, coaching only happened when I did something wrong. And so anytime I would get one of these phone calls or an email from an assistant that my director wanted to schedule a meeting, it would immediately cause anxiety because I was like, okay, what did I do wrong this time? Um, I think that's versus, really yeah, versus now where I have regular touch bases with my boss and the anxiety is gone um, because I know even if I'm maybe, I don't get in trouble, but even if it is going to be more of a coaching that I need to make changes or progress, um, I know it's done from the right place with the right intent to help me be better exactly. versus just you did this wrong, fix it. So yeah. that's important. Yeah. Were you going to say something, Logan? No, I just said it's important. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I was going to say, um, yeah, I my past job, my manager was like, we would do coachings every two weeks. Mm -hmm. And I think that helped me a lot because um, when I got to the branch, something happened with our manager's um, dad and she had to travel. Um, but because of staffing, I wasn't able to go to my training really. So I was kind of left like alone, like you're going to learn on your own, mm -hmm. really stressful and like scare. Um, but I mean, I feel like the coaching part helped. Like once she came back, she acknowledged, you know, like, Hey, like, you know, how can I help you to do this better? Like do it this way. And I think that helped me do my job better. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't as anxious as I was in the beginning. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree. That's very important. Regular feedback is good. Mm -hmm. And kind of enforces, reinforces the culture that they're looking at. Exactly. So what principles can we think through? The principles of effective feedback and see how that applies to the situation. Is there anything in there specifically that we should, Mary should make sure she covers. Um, Are you talking about the um, PowerPoint? PowerPoint. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That like really long PowerPoint that we had. Yeah. Let me see. I have it up. I mean, it was interesting to see how they approach things. Um, mm -hmm. Like on the examples they were giving. Because sometimes I feel like we can be very direct or the way we say it, but it's like how to think it in a way that you won't offend the other person or say it in a better way. Um, I don't know how to. I think, uh, yeah. I don't think offending, offending is never the like end goal, mm -hmm. but sometimes I th think in coaching sessions, we we don't want to hurt people's feelings and tough things need to be said. This isn't going to probably be a pleasant conversation for Simon. 
Um, but stuff, it, the conversation needs to happen. And it's really for his own personal growth and development. Like if, if this conversation doesn't happen for a year and he gets fired for this, like then what's his response going to be like, what do you mean you never talked to me about that? This, like we could have been working on this already. Exactly. Yeah. It's, they just kind of have to bite the bullet on it. And, you know, like, as you said, the end goal is never to offend, but Mm -hmm. sometimes you just have to, you have to let them know what needs to happen. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. Be clear. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, what do we have any recommendations for the discussion that she's going to have with Simon? I think we, we covered it a little bit with like, well, you, uh, let him know he's doing good. He's working hard and then you show and explain how he can improve. I think that's the most important recommendation is just helping him and then once he gets his stuff figured out with the people under him then the problems will slowly begin to fix themselves yeah Uh um okay i think it does it needs to be a pointed conversation i'm a big fan too of coaching like when we come up with action plans of like the person coming up with the action plan like so you know, sharing with Simon what he's seeing. I'm talking a lot, guys. I'm sorry. Um, seeing what he's seeing, but then also um, asking, asking open-ended questions so he can start analyzing his behavior and then together coming up with what are you having his commitment and having him come up with what he's going to do to fix it. Mm-hmm. It gets a little bit more. I think buy-in. also um, Griffin should also express to him that she is available if Mm -hmm. he needs anything yeah so that way he doesn't feel alone or trapped like you know okay how do i make this happen you know but i don't have anyone to yeah go to so that's true i think having her um or her approaching him as like you know like hey i'm here to help you just you know let me know whenever you need help or you have any questions or you know things like that i think that that can help him Definitely. Yeah, I agree. Um, really, and then it's not just like the behavior of like, you suck, I'm going to slap your hands. But mm-hmm. it is really them working as a team to help him be a better leader. Exactly. Which is like, I think, more encouraging and less like you suck. Yeah, I agree. Cool. Okay. We've already talked about what we've read from the readings that apply. Um, So just to kind of summarize what we talked about, um, I I don't have anything else. Do you guys have anything else to points or last comments? I think we covered it pretty good. Yeah, Yeah, I think so. I think just to kind of summarize what we talked about, like um, I think we said culture is important and what Mary was doing to support the culture. Um, But then also there's probably some things that she could do a little bit differently, approaching things a little bit more timely and um, not letting the inconsistency happen. Mm -hmm. Um, We definitely talked about Simon and kind of the impact that his behavior has on the team and on the company. He's doing really good things and he's driving business and um, making some innovation and people are excited about that, but, Um, he's kind of stepping on people's heads to get up the ladder. Mm -hmm. Um, and so there's definitely a conversation that needs to happen. Um, Mary should be open and supportive and, um, let him know that she's there as his leader to kind of help him. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I think following up then too, um, to see how he's doing. We didn't, I didn't say that before, but. I do think that makes a difference. It's a level of accountability Mm -hmm. um, to let them know you're still like thinking about things. Um, Anything else to add? Does that about cover everything? I think that's good. Okay. Awesome. I think that's everything then. Yeah. Um, Thanks for putting up with the technical difficulties. Oh, (laughs) did you guys... um, go through and fill out like when you would like to um, lead. 
Yeah. Uh, I have not done that yet. Thank you okay. for the reminder. I'll be sure to do that. Okay. Taylor posted that on the Google Drive, so we can get that. We need to get that like emailed into the teacher. Oh, okay. Cool. So. Yeah. Cool. Everyone have a great night. Thank you. All right. You um, too. So with the link for this. Yeah. Do you want me to just post it or like how do, how does this work? I think I'm supposed to post it. I don't. Okay. Um, yeah. So if you just send it to me, that's great. Okay. I'll and then I'll post it and that takes care of like the um the assignment for sorry my screen. Board? Um yeah, the assignment for uh there's the reading discussion board which we still have to do uh -huh. and then there's like the uh I don't know remember what it's called. I'm getting there very slowly. Uh -huh. Um the case study activity so all that we have to do in that is then just post the link to this thing and then that's mm -hmm. taken care of all right cool that works yeah and then we should be good to go okay okay cool Thank have you. a good night guys good night. all right see ya. bye